am Dr. Ashita Revindran, working in the Department of Social Sciences in NCERT. So today we will be dealing with the theory of consumer behavior. And in theory of consumer behavior, as you are all aware that we will be dealing with the behavior of the consumers, that is the consumption activities will be dealt in this session. And so for the beginning, we have to know what is activities. We do a lot of activities. And to just to introduce you towards uh, what are the economic activities, let me just tell you a story and story of Ramu. Ramu is an 18 year old boy who wakes up early at 5.30 and he goes to uh, distribute the newspapers. So initially he does his brushing and all, washing and all, and then dresses up and then he goes to the for the distribution of the newspaper. After coming back, he have his food and then again he is back to the school. So uh, in this cases, when he is walking towards the school, he sees a dog nearby, he plays with the dog, he talks to his friend, then he catches a bus, he gets down at the school and then he is uh, there in the classroom to study. Now hearing the story, which are the activities that Ramu has done belong to the economic activities. So we have to find out what is an economic activity that Ramu has done today. In that, when whichever activities which is done for money or which is related to money, that only becomes economic activities. In case of Ramu, when he got up, he had his washing, all these things were not economic activities. But when he went for the distribution of newspapers, he was distributing the newspapers and that means he was engaging in an economic activity where he has done something which is for earning money. Now think about the situation when Ramu was going to the school. He was playing with a dog. Was it related to money? It was not related to anything um, of price or money or anything like that. It was just for earning some pleasure, he was playing with a dog. So that does not become an economic activity. Now he was catching a bus. Was he doing any economic activity? Yes, that is also an economic activity. When he is consuming the services of the bus driver as well as the bus conductor, there he is also engaging in a consumption activity where it is economic activity. Now he reaches a school, he talks to his friends, he plays with his friends. Is it an economic activity? No, it is not an economic activity. Now, when he is sitting in the class and he is learning something, his teacher is coming to the class and taking classes for him. So, is he doing an economic activity? Yes, that is also an economic activity. He is taking the services of the teacher. He is studying. So, that also is related to money. So, this is why we have to differentiate between the economic activities and the non-economic activities. So think about those situations where you are doing the economic activity, which are the economic activities that you are doing and which are the non-economic activities. There are many activities which we do for love, for out of pleasure or many things like that. It can be social activities, it can be political activities, it can be religious activities. So all these activities, non-economic activities which we do for pleasure and love are not considered in economics. We take into consideration those activities which we do or which is related to money. So that does not mean that only if you produce something, it becomes an economic activity. Even when you are consuming certain things or even when you are exchanging something, this all these things come under the category of economic activities. So when we classify the economic activities, we can classify it as production, consumption and exchange. So in the case of production, as you know that when you are producing certain things, then it comes under the economic activity, it is done for money and it is related to money also. And in case of consumption, now when Ramu was having his food, he was consuming certain things. So that is he was consuming goods. There also he was doing an economic activity. Now he was catching a bus, he was traveling in a bus. There also, even though it is not a good, it is a service, but still he was consuming that services, services of the bus conductor, services of the bus driver. So that way Ramu was also doing an economic activity that is called consumption.
Then take the case of the exchange that Ramu was distributing the newspaper. He was not producing the newspaper. He was just distributing it in the nearby household. So there he was doing an exchange activity. The shopkeeper near you is not producing the commodity. He is just distributing it to you at a certain price. But still he is also doing an economic activity. But when we come to relate it in that manner, we don't differentiate production and exchange that much differently because almost everything that is exchanged is also produced. So that way we can treat uh, the economic activities into production and consumption itself. So now we have the different types of activities and now we are aware about the economic activities that you are doing. So think about what are the economic activities that you are doing. Do you produce anything? In case of Ramu, he was producing something, he was exchanging the newspapers. But in case of most of the students, you need not be a product producer right now, but in later on in life, you will also will have to do certain economic activities which are related to production. Right now, you are only doing the activity of consumption. Maybe some of you might be doing some production activities also, but still most of you will be generally consumers. That is, you will be doing only consumption activities. And from the day you are born, all human beings are doing the consumption activities. So that way, today the relevance of this chapter, that is the theory of consumer behavior, it becomes very important because we are dealing with our own behavior. We all of us are consumers and none of the human beings can live without consuming anything. So all of us will have to engage in the consumption activity. That way, let's think about how do we behave in the market? How does the, all the consumer generally behave? And what is the importance of studying this consumption behavior? Why do we study it? What is the need of studying the consumption behavior? How does it become important for the government to know about how will the consumer behave? Suppose the government wants to charge certain taxes. The government needs to know how much of the commodities the consumer is going to demand. Then only, depending upon that, government is going to fix the taxes. Take the case of the farmer. How do he, does he fix the price of the commodities? He fixes the price of the commodities taking into consideration how much price he will be getting from the consumers. So that means he has to take into consideration the demand of the consumer. That means he also should be knowing about the consumer behavior. So think about any person. Everyone needs to know about each one's behavior. How will that consumer behave in this particular situation. So then only the producer, be it a producer or a consumer, a farmer, a miner or, or a government, everyone needs to know how will the consumer behave in the market. That is why it becomes very important for us to learn the theories behind the consumer behavior. Now what do we learn in it? We learn a set of principles for understanding how the individual is going to make choices. How does he make choices? What determines his choices? And also, how does this individual choices interact? That means we will have to be aware about how the consumer is going to behave in a market situation. In this chapter of theory of consumer behavior, we shall be dealing with the budget, the preferences of the consumer, then the optimal choices that are made by the consumer, that is how the consumer is going to find his optimum and then how the we can draw find out the individual demands and also the market demand they we also will be dealing with the elasticity of demand so elasticity is a mathematical term but still we'll be dealing with how to find out the elasticity of demand and the concepts related to it so this contains the uh, these are the concepts that we will be dealing in the chapter of theory of consumer behavior so let's first start with the budget why do we start with budget? We all know that when we are consuming certain commodities, what is the thing that first comes to our mind? It is the income. We need certain money for us. So we need the income, then only we are going able to purchase certain commodities. So budget becomes important for every consumer. Depending upon the money that he has, depending upon the income that the person has, he will be deciding upon what are the commodities that he has to buy. Only if we have prices or the income in our hand, then only we can decide upon how much of commodities we will be able to purchase. So everything depends upon budget and therefore in this uh, session we will be dealing with the budget. You might have heard about the budget in general. 
like you might be he hearing that the finance minister is going to make the budget presentation today in the parliament. Now, that budget is entirely different from the budget that we are dealing with. We are dealing with the budget of an individual and that budget is the budget of the Indian economy. So that comes under the macroeconomics and here we are dealing with microeconomics and there in this budget we are dealing with the cases of the individual and it is related to the income and prices in general. So in the budget what becomes important here is the income of the consumer as well as the prices. So let us first start with the budget set. How can we make a budget set? How can we find out the combinations that can be purchased by the consumer? So budget set shows those combinations which the individual consumer can buy. So what decides the budget set? As I have said before, it is the income of the consumer as well as the prices of the commodities. Now let us assume a situation where the income of the consumer is 10 rupees. That is you have 10 rupees in your hand and you have want to purchase only two commodities. Let us assume that you want to purchase a biscuit and sweets and the both the prices let it remain the same so that we will be able to find out the budget set. The prices let it be 2 rupees each for the each of the commodities. Now you have 10 rupees in your hand and 2 rupees is the price of the biscuit as well as the price of the sweets. Now let to find out the budget set you can buy both the commodities zero that is you need not purchase anything you can keep your 10 rupees in your hand that is also a budget set that is available for you. Suppose you are buying only one sweet again that budget set is also available to you that is you can purchase zero um, biscuits and one sweet there you are going to spend only 2 rupees 8 rupees is still remaining in your hand. You can again increase the number of sweets to 2, 3, 4 and 5. Think about the situation when it comes to 0, 6. That is you are not going to purchase any biscuits but you are going to purchase 6 sweets. Will you be able to purchase 6 sweets? No, because 6 sweets cost you 12 rupees. You have only 10 rupees in your hand. So the maximum number of sweets that you can buy is 5 sweets. Now take the case of the if you are going to buy one biscuit. When you are purchasing one biscuit then you can do away with the sweets you can purchase zero sweets one biscuit and again one sweet again you can have increase the number of sweets to four. Now take the case when you are purchasing one biscuit and five sweets is it possible? No. Why? Because you need more amount of money. When you are purchasing one biscuit you are not able to purchase more than four sweets. You will have to stop your sweets or you will have to limit your sweets up to the maximum of four if you are purchasing one biscuit. So is the case when you are going on increasing the number of biscuits you will have to reduce the number of sweets available to you. So there you will be able to purchase five biscuits but you will not be able to purchase any of the sweets. So this is the maximum that you can buy and the maximum of sweets that you can buy with 10 rupees in your hand and the price of, of both the commodities being the same is 0, 05 that is you are able to purchase only 5 sweets and the maximum number of biscuits that you can buy is only 5. That means both the things you can buy up to the maximum of 5 only. So this comprises the budget set. And when you take into consideration all the combinations, all the combinations of biscuits and sweets that is available to you that comprises the budget set. You can do away with the biscuits and the sweets, keep 10 rupees for yourself that is also a budget set. So when you are making a budget set, you have to include 0, 0 also as a budget set. That is why it becomes important for you to have 0, 0 also as a budget set and then go to the maximum of 0, 5 and also 5, 0, which means that 5 biscuits and 0 sweets and the other cases 0 biscuits and 5 sweets. Now we have learned how to form a budget set given the level of income as well as the prices of the commodities. So given the level of combinations that are available to the consumer, now next session we will be dealing with how to form a budget line, how we can draw a budget line when the consumer has a level of income and the prices of the commodities are known to him. Thank you.